Right, so this morning, it's Sunday morning, we're going to have a look at Stafford Castle. Yeah. Near Stafford, so I thought, it's got a castle. Yeah, so we we'll have to go and have, have a quick look at it. Don't know whether we can get in it or, or what, but it's in a, in a big park, a very dog-friendly park, apparently. Right. Obviously we're going back up the A34 towards Stafford and then yeah. I think we turn, we follow the signs for Telford I think. For Cheltenham? Telford. Telford. Go on here with the sunroof open. Go on here near the best. No. That's towards your top sitter, isn't it? So that can't should have put the satin hang on. Ah, oh, right. Going past Taco Bill. Yeah, Taco Bell. Not Taco Bill. Yeah, so we're turning left here. We could have gone straight on there. <laughs> Can we? Oh, sorry. <laughs> Stafford oh, Castle, yeah. okay, it's yeah. fine. Right, right, it's a sign, okay, yeah. So, so straight on. Yeah, I told you it was Telford, didn't I? Telford. 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 Station there. Rides up here. Saturday, Sunday, eleven AM to four PM. That's the visitor centre, oh, I right, think they okay park and everything so it's open longer. Yeah, uh, April to October, 11 to 4 summer opening. I think it does seem to suggest it opens at 11 but we'll have a look and have a walk around coming before. Just wonder why they park there. Well because, I don't know, car park there. Car park's here. Yeah. No. Busy. That's why they park there. <laughs> Space here, aren't there? Right, here we are. One pound for the car park, wasn't it? Yeah. Where the castle is. It's a medieval garden here, herb garden. The visitor centre is open at 11 o'clock and we're here about half ten. So we'll perhaps have a look around here. Nice little seat there. <laughs> it is, isn't it? Clever. 
Yeah. And got a medieval herb garden. This is the earliest reference to a garden. And Stafford Castle occurs in 1290. And they've tried to recreate the kind of ga garden the castle may have had in its medieval heyday. <laughs> it looked like weeds to me. <laughs> I was just about to say that. Well, maybe I'm missing something. I'm not an expert on anything to do with gardens. No, so uh, I don't say these are I all suppose weeds. Some of our viewers will point out uh, what these are. These are all medicinal herbs, I suppose. <laughs> well, it looks a bit overgrown to me. Yeah, but the grass has been cut. Yeah. And maybe it was meant to be like this. Yeah. <laughs> They'll be going, oh yeah, that's a... Um... So there's one that's flatter over there. Flatter? What do well, you mean? it hasn't got these great big tall things in it. <laughs> I think it's more like a wild flower garden. Yeah. Well, this is wild rose, isn't it? I know, know that. That's hogweed. Right. <laughs> is there anything else through here? Mm. Going into the woods here. And where this goes in. And somewhere in there's a sign that says Castle <laughs> Trail. <laughs> does, it, does that mean it takes you to the castle or does it mean it goes round the castle? No idea. Is Mr. Google not helping us at all here? No, no. Let's go up here then. Come on, Poppy. It's lovely and cool in, in the forest here. There's a little sign coming up and there's a place selling Coffee Coffees or and things, yeah. Okay. Oh, swap trails. Ah, okay, well, this is a map here. So we're walking around the. Uh, okay, so we're here. There's a road going across. Okay, so there's a keep and an inner bailey. Alright, okay, that makes a bit more sense. Yeah, so we'll walk this way then. This area is known as a castle wood, once part of the Great Park, with a vast local estate belonging to the Stafford family. In the Norman and early medieval periods, it was not wooded, but laid out as lawn, pasture land. In the late medieval period, Stafford Castle lost its military significance and was a high status baronial manor house. This is when Edward Stafford, the third Duke of Buckingham, was executed for high treason. In 1521, the castle was forfeited to Henry VIII. An inventory carried out for the king described the park as having a boundary three miles long containing 400 deer. The park fell out of use by 1735, and the area was standing in now by 1788 was known as a hop yard. And in more history, 1783, Sir William Jerningham instructed Thomas Barnaby to landscape the castle grounds were made available as a public park and from this time on the estate was run on a commercial basis. Between 1828 and 1832 the hop yard was planted with 3,800 trees where they fell and taken place at various times over the following century the site was cleared 48-49 and in the 50s it was replanted with birch, beech and sycamore. And it says this um Woodland Trail follows the traditional route used by ramblers and dog walkers since the area was replanted. Approximately one mile along the path is a circular walk clockwise in any direction. Okay. So you can go that way or you can go or that, that way. way. Very nice then. Yeah. So obviously popular with dog walkers. Yep. A little bit here about the postern gate. It was like the back door, wasn't it? Or was the postern the tradesman's gate? Tradesman's entrance, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> The Castle Trail starts at the southern limits of the Outer Bailey adjacent to its junction with the settlement site. Here a gap in the Bailey's defensive banks probably represents the site of a postern gate, providing direct access from the castle to the main medieval road to Newport and the medieval manors of Hyde, Lee and Bradley. The illustration shows a single portal gateway beneath the timber timber or I lost it, timber tower set into the outer bailey. 
funneling potential attackers into an area, area where they could be attacked from above. So we're going to follow the trail of the heavily sighted outer bailey ditch with ramparts which were crowned by timber palisade with fighting platforms <gasps> to the left. Right. And to the right the earthworks and terrace of the settlement itself encompassed by a ditch and bank on which would stud timber defences. Okay. Come on then Pops. Well, it's amazing what you can find, isn't it? I mean I never even knew that Stafford had a castle. No, well I always uh, Google when we're somewhere castles near us. Yeah. And then because it, it came up with this, I mean sometimes the in a town they're just a like a bit of wall, aren't they? Yeah. But this looked interesting. I watched um, another YouTube video on it. Somebody talking about the Outer Bailey and all the history of it. Okay. It was originally a wooden castle, you know, Norman yeah. times. Yeah. They said, you know, dog walkers love it. She's off. <laughs> You know which way you're going? Not that way. Um, going this way. Yeah, so just off the track here is the settlement sign. It says the medieval settlement was located in this and the adjoining field covers an area of 6.1 acres, single storied half timbered buildings with wattle and door walls, thatched roofs constructed as serious terraces. The earthworks consist of three parallel and equidistant hollowways or eroded streets. Deepest and central lies immediately to the right. So that's that there, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Small village that once stood here was deserted in the early 15th century to make way for Lord Stafford's livery. Right. Uh, records reveal that there were 40 yeomen and grooms at the castle in 1444, indicating that there was an extensive stabling, site was defended, having a bank on the southwest along the modern driveway and a wide ditch lying to the rear gardens of the modern house. Leading to the front lay a bridging port point leading to a single portal gateway with a palisade and fighting platform above. Up there somewhere. <laughs> on either side two, project, two projected towers with a curtain wall. Yeah, so obviously these are the remains of the... Are they a little settlement? Yeah. yeah. Quite a place at one time. Yeah, oh yeah, by the sounds of it. Oh, we're just getting a glimpse of the castle now. We're approaching the Outer Bailey. And Outer Bailey was a large enclosure, 4.18 acre, acres, originally defended by ditches, ramparts, and a palisade. In addition to the main gate, there were three other case gates. Postern in the southern corner, a gate on the northern side, and a western gate leading over a ditch to the inner bailey. A series of crisscross patterns of streets linked these three gates. It was a hive of activity, and the area was occupied by skills craftsmen, key manual workers, such as millers, and perhaps by soldiers and less important members of Lord Stafford's re re retinue. There would also be storage areas where food and grain were kept dry and secure while stabling at animal pens may have also featured. The illustration shows the bailey with buildings fronting onto the main street which leads to the western gate and the inner bailey beyond. Two Normans seen standing in guard in front of the partly raised drawbridge. Is that them? Yeah. There's one of them there. Where's the other one? Oh there. There. Yeah. It's there. Just say. <laughs> Blimey, there's loads of boards here. Loads of information, that's great. I think I can't think which National Trust property we went to. Uh, oh, at uh, Bodium, wasn't it? Yeah. No, hardly any boards at all. No, I know. Yeah, you were struggling, weren't you? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's a fantastic place, but... I probably needed to do um, Anthea's tour, I think. I think you did, really, yeah. yeah. There we are. Oh, okay. I mean, it's not a huge place, but what remains of it? Oh, I think we're in the inner bailey now. Come on, come here. About 1100. 
it says here. Really just sort of gives you an idea of what it might have been like here. But uh, the hollow way through the impressive ramparts marks the site of the important gateway to the inner bailey. One steep V-shaped ditch would have been spanned by a timber drawbridge leading from the outer bailey. In the illustration it suggested that gateway was sent back, set back. An attack across in the ditch and entering the confined space of the gate passage would have found themselves assailed by defenders on three sides and from above. In the early Norman period, when siege warfare was very much in its infancy, this defensive system would have been this defensive system would have presented an almost impossible obstacle. The ditch to our left has almost been completely lost and would originally have the same profile as the one to the right, which is Look that one there. there, isn't it? Yeah. So from here you can follow the external line of the inner bailey ramparts and mott counterscarp bank from trail boards 6 to 10, or you can walk through the inner bailey gateway, trail boards 11 to 15. So that's over, over there. Here. Yeah, so we're looking at the inner and outer bailey defences, about 1100 and something. This is the view shows the northwest corner of the outer bailey, inner bailey ditch, and a massive inner bailey ramparts behind. Today the ditch is partially filled in. Uh, yeah, perhaps is, by yeah. another three metres, while a clay lining meant it would retain rainwater, so it would be steep and slippery and a formidable obstacle, particularly when facing defending archers who would shoot 14 to 16 hours a minute Oof. at a moving target from the palisade above. Nice. Yeah, so... Not they, easy. <laughs> they would be up, up there, wouldn't would they? They would, yeah. 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 Defences would be further strengthened by occasional towers given a, a greater field of fire. In the foreground is the work of constructing the outer bailey defences with a palisade fighting platform or protect, protected walkway and a corner tower. So even as a wooden castle, it would have been quite an obstacle. Mm, mm. Are you having fun, pups? Hey, loads of smells. Yeah, loads. It's even, even there, look how deep that is. Yeah. You cross that obstacle, then you... Then you've got to get through <laughs> this huge through here. thing. Puppy, you've got to watch this obstacle here. Yeah. Come on, puppy, move. Move. <laughs> oh. Too many smells. So this is the inner Bailey defences and Mott what you can see of it. I'm not sure you can see it in the shadow here either. So it says on this side of the castle the ramparts of the inner bailey dominated by the motto are at the strongest and most impressive and in the foreground the inner bailey ditch is visible which is this here and the illustration shows it's surrounded by a four meter high palisade with external hoardings and internal towers. There's a bridge not visible which would have led up to um, lost it, Le led up to the bailey to a gate tower on top of the mot, which itself was defended by a palisade. Evidence suggests that the wooden building may have been plastered and painted to look like stone. While this would not fool a determined attacker, it would help protect the timber from fire. It's described in a document kept in Flanders. Yeah, kept a sim oh, similar timber keep. Yeah. Uh, Arnold built upon the mot a timber house, almost impenetrable labyrinth, piling storeroom upon storeroom, chamber upon chamber, room upon room, extending the larders and granaries into the cellars, and building the chapel in a convenient place overlooking all else from high up on the eastern side. That was a similar timber, docu uh, timber keep at Ardres, Flanders. I spotted these little uh, things hanging up on trees. There's quite a few of them. I think they're schools that have been here. Yeah. Rowan. <laughs> this way. You're going your own trip, are you? Eh? You're going your own way. We're going See this way. See you later then. See you yeah. later. Yeah, bye Poppy.
It's a delightful walk through the woods here, so uh, if you're looking for someone to come and walk your dog, I mean, it's apart from the noise of the M6 in the background, <laughs> it's very peaceful. Yeah, something about the plant life here, and various things. Dog's mercury. Leaves this plant to crush, they release an unpleasant smell. Oh, good. Yeah. Fungi, dead wood, butterflies. Yeah. Come on, you. Nice carve in there. Yeah, Poppy. Chase that up a tree. Mr. Frank Bailey. Recognition of 27 loyal, years loyal service to the Queen's Grant Charity in Stafford. Hmm. It's a good name for someone who uh, helps a, a, an old uh, Mott and Bailey castle, That's isn't right. it? That's <laughs> right. It's got the right name, isn't yeah. it? Come on. Quite heavily wooded here, isn't it? Yeah, so just back to where we started, really. I think the visitor centre will be open. We'll have something to eat and then we're going to explore the castle. Yeah, it's starting to get busy down there. Car park's full, isn't it, now? Car park's full, yeah. So It is Sunday, so I suppose we should should expect that. We're just going to walk up to the castle now and see what, see what that's like. Bit of a climb. Yep. And Poppy's all right, it's engaged four wheel drive, low ratio. There we are. Oop. Climb up here. And that's the view to the south east side of the Mott and the western defences of the Inner Bailey. So there would have been a wall over there. It'd be in the junction of three ditches the Inner Bailey and the Outer Bailey ditch. And vulnerable or dead ground would have been covered by archers from the bailey, the mott and the counter scarp uh, defences. It says the illustration shows a deep ditch dividing the mott from the inner bailey. Today the modern road covers the site of the infield mott ditch shown here on the right of the mott and the defences to the inner bailey include a palisade with hoardings and towers all defended with arrow slits and loopholes. Within the palisade on top of the mot is shown a large timber hall, to the rear of which lies a three-storey timber keep. The mot was constructed using materials obtained from the ditch cutting, built up onto what was already a high ridge overlooking the pre-castle site. The ditch itself was regularly maintained and cleaned out to preserve its depths and steepness. It's not always a dry ditch. It was always a dry ditch and not water filled, although it's clay lining meant the rainwater were collected in the bottom, making it slippery and difficult to cross. And even, even today it's quite a climb up here. Yep, oops. Yeah. Another board. Yeah, loads of boards here. You see, whatever structures lay on the summit of the mot, the space would have been confined and limited, which created the need for a bailey or defended enclosure to provide additional accommodation. Stafford Castle was unusual, it had two large baileys and a defended settlement beyond. The position provides a good view over the inner bailey, where the domestic buildings of the castle were situated. From the gateway in the southeast corner, the ground rises in three terraces towards the mot, while the infilled mot ditch followed the line of the modern road. Inner Bailey was where the routine daily life of the castle took place. At its centre would have been an open courtyard where the well was located and where women and children were congregated. Around it, backing onto the palisade, would have been a range of buildings including halls, chambers, chapel, kitchen, brew house, stores, granaries, stables and others. In this illustration, looking back up the castle hill from St Mary's, the Inner Bailey is shown prior to construction of these buildings. Again, around 1100. Whew. Getting there. Getting closer, aren't we? Yeah. Finally getting to the castle here. Wow. There's a board Jumped here. A bit now to Civil War. Yeah. So in 1643, the castle was held for the king by the old lady 
Isabel Stafford occurred a man, minor skirmish in May when the garrison, according to the parliamentarian commander, shot some of our men and horses, which did enrage and provoke the rest of fierce revenge. Almost all the dwelling houses and outhouses were burnt to the ground. The castle was re later reinforced by royalists, but lay in a state of siege until July, when the royalists hastily evacuated the site following intelligence that a parliamentary army, complete with siege cannons, was fast approaching. It was later claimed that royalists fled with such haste they left their beer and popish books. <laughs> On the 2nd of December, parliamentary committee in Stafford ordered that Stafford Castle be forthwith demolished. There we go again. So yeah. Well, it's like that. So the illustration dates from 1683 and shows the shattered remains of the medieval castle. Overlook, overlooking Stafford, even as a ruin on the engravings conveys the original size and stature of the keep and a feeling how great the baronial castle of the Middle Ages dominated the countryside and the people living in its shadow. Mm. What a shame. I'm trying not to film into the sun here, it's uh, quite bright up here. We're going the wrong way around for that then, really, aren't we? <laughs> Probably. Yeah. Do not climb on the walls. Yeah. And so we're looking at the stone keep. Okay. Go and tell us what's up there. Go on. Let off a bit. Anything exciting can get in there, Poppy? Hey, eh? can you get in there? That door. No, door shut. She says. <laughs> Come on. Some f fine views up here, anyway. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. Well, it can, looks like we can get in up here. Let's have a little read of the board first. Peter. The Gothic reconstruction. It says, following the Civil War, Stafford Castle remained in ruined state until the Jerningham family of Norfolk, the heirs of parents of, to the barony, cleared the site and rebuilt the East Wing on the foundations of the 14th century structure. The keep represents an early and important example of Gothic revival architecture. In 1950, the castle, still owned by the Stafford Barony and occupied by the caretakers, Mr and Mrs Stokes, was finally abandoned due to deterioration and subsequent neglect and vandalism. In 1962, following the death of a teenager during partial collapse of the building the previous year, the upper portions of the keep were demolished for reasons of public safety. Oh, right. So in 1978, Stafford Borough Council embarked on a major archaeological project and ten years later the castle was officially open to the public. At the foot of the castle is a specially built visitor centre which we'll have a look at and it, it contains reproduction arms and armour. <coughs> Poppy please. <coughs> Poppy! Wait, this is important. Uh, a detailed model reconstruction <coughs> of the Norman, a detailed model reconstruction of the Norman Mott and Bailey. <coughs> <sighs> You've seen some steps, I'm sorry. Go on then, we're going to have a look. We'll have a look in there. We'll have a look in the visitor centre in a bit. Because Poppy's too impatient to go up some steps. Can you wait for me, Poppy? You can go in here. So I'm off, obviously we're not looking at what the uh, original castle looked like, but uh, reconstruction. Castle Keep. So said it was obviously built in timber by the Normans in 1090. Yeah. Ralph de Stafford replaced, replaced the castle. Yeah, with a keep or hall house. Only the, the stone foundations survived. Come on, Pops, you've got some stairs to climb here. Oh, she's gone. <laughs> Lost her. Oh, it's gone in here now. Bobby. 
of grief, Pops. Where's she gone? <laughs> it's gone up these stairs that go nowhere. Oh, grief. Wow, look at this. Oh. This reminds me of somewhere. Reminds you of somewhere? Yeah, where it had a lot of corridors. I like think it was Bo Morris. Morris Castle. Bo Morris? Yeah, the one in Wales. This is the Gothic Revival Keep. Oh, blimey, I don't think I'm going to read all of that. You'll be glad to know. But at current Stafford Castle was rebuilt between 1811 and 1821. And it reflects the style of the previous medieval castle, an early example of Gothic Revival architecture. I think I've already read that somewhere. Yeah. Can't quite get through there. <laughs> well. <laughs> you want to have a look, Pops? Want to have another look out this one? You want to have a look yeah, out it's here? It's different here. Come on, Poppy, look. Come on. What's the look? Come on. Oh, she won't. So run. she thinks it's a trick, doesn't she? It's a trick, yeah. Yeah. yeah they obviously took down the tower there, didn't they? Yeah, what a shame. Come on, Pops, you can go up here. See what's up there. Oh. Nothing again? No, can't go up there. So it's based on, this is Ralph de Stafford's Keep, based on contemporary evidence and archaeological excavations, possible to piece together what an idea of what Ralph de Sta Stafford's Keep would have looked like in its heyday. The basement had cellars, one Tower main and house prisoners awaiting trial. Elevated ground floor include kitchen, larder, and buttery, great hall, and the Lord's chambers above. Towers used as bedrooms for storage. While well, the fifth tower in the middle of the south wall housed a small chapel. God, that would have been quite something, wouldn't it? So he lost it, um, seized by the Crown, the security against his debts in 1610. Yeah. And he died here in 1625. Oh dear. Strong and stately commanding castle, somewhat ruined by it on top of that hill, a fair house wherein lives a good old lady, most bountiful housekeeper. Lady Isabel. Captured yeah. and reduced to rubble by the parliamentarians in 1643. The castle is now ruinated and there only remains on the hill the fortification trenches overgrown with green. Oh, that's sad, isn't it? Mm. Come on, Poppy, you can have a look up here. She's, you've tried those, they don't go anywhere. Yeah, just about squeeze through there. There we are. Nice view over Staffordshire. Let's come back through there. <laughs> you disappointed. Disappointing, Pops, isn't it, that you can't climb any of the, the towers? Big towers, yeah. Hey? Right, you're going down there to salt now, are you? <laughs> Go on then. Look, there's a window here, Poppy. <laughs> Another one here that can't quite reach. You won't be able to see out that one. No, that's no use to you, is it, at all? Yeah, I know, we've been round that way. Because there's the dial that tells you where everything is. Well, several of those. Oh, are there? Yeah. Okay. It also looks like there's a party of school children down there. <laughs> <laughs>